Welcome back to our channel. We are the World Family Explorers, Chris, Ellie, Logan, and Connor. We left our life in the U.S. behind for a world of adventures, and today we're sharing the best tips we picked up during our seven weeks of travel in Greece with you. We'll go over what islands to visit, how long to stay, and everything else you need to know before you book your trip. Subscribe, hit that like button, and let's get started. Welcome back to our channel. I am Ellie, and this is Chris. And today, this is going to be a little different video, but we want to share all of the tips and tricks we learned during our time in Greece. Yeah, we were there for seven weeks, so we hopped to three different islands and Athens. So, yeah, we've got quite a bit of knowledge after that experience, and we want to share it with you. That way you can plan the best trip to Greece uh, you possibly can. Yeah, and make sure you stick around to see which island was our favorite. Yeah, we'll, we'll right. reveal that at the end. <laughs> we, may, we may have different answers for that one, but we'll see. Hmm. I don't know. Actually, <laughs> maybe we should have discussed that before the video. So it might be a surprise to us too. First things we're going to discuss is best time to visit Greece. When is the best time? Well, I mean, not the time that we went, probably. Yeah. So it was go, a little hot. It was a little hot, but... Don't, don't go maybe when we went. We went um, mid-August until end of September. And especially mid-August, it's, it's very, very hot. July and August are the hottest times of year. So I would recommend come in the fall, September, October. I think October would be the best time to visit. Um, the water would still be warm. It would still be hot outside, but it's not going to be crazy hot like we experienced. Yeah, like the beaches, of course, beach days were fine with the heat and everything, but if you're just sitting outdoors, eating and everything, or walking, it was pretty, outside. Or walking outside in the sun, it was pretty hot, especially when we're traveling full time with kids. So that adds another factor on, you know, worrying about the weather and about the heat. Definitely. And the other time of year that's probably the better option um, would be in the springtime. So May, June, although during that time of year, you may not be able to swim. The, the water might be too cold, or at least it would yeah. be too cold for me. It was perfect temperature when we were there, I'll say that. Like it was the hot water. out, but the water was amazing on all the islands that we went to, so that was great. Mm -hmm. um, the thing that I thought actually was that I just thought Greece had perfect weather all year round. I didn't really think I had to pick a particular time. Like she did her due diligence and looked at the weather, but- We knew what we were getting into yeah, as we far as that, it being yeah. hot. Um, but it just worked out with our schedule and where we were at in the world at that point. So we don't regret going in, in the peak time, but if you can help it, I would go off season either in the fall or in the spring. That way you're avoiding the crowd, the weather would be better, and then the prices will obviously be lower too. Yeah, and obviously if you're somebody that just wants to go there and experience the wonderful Greek food and go hiking and everything, and you like that milder temperature and you're not gonna go to the beaches anyway, then go in the winter. There yeah, will be gonna... some, you will get such a great deal on accommodations. Like I wouldn't mind doing that actually. You know, if, if we weren't gonna do any beach time or anything, that would be great to go in the, in the colder temps. Yeah, well, the only thing that you would have to watch out for is in the winter, especially on the islands, a lot of things close. Mm. Um, yeah, that's true. So there will be some closures. Now it's... on certain islands like Crete, that's yeah. a pretty popular If you're gonna go in the island. winter, if you are gonna go in like the winter or the colder months, I would choose Crete for sure, because that has more opportunity to go hiking and still has a lot open in the cities for as far as the restaurants and everything. Yeah, and I believe that the temperature in Crete would actually be the warmest as well. Yeah, because it's the furthest the south. The furthest south. Yeah. How long to stay in Greece? Well, hmm. <laughs> as long as possible. The longer the better. <laughs> yeah, so we did seven weeks, but obviously not everybody has that much time to spend there. So that's when you gotta kind of prioritize prioritize and figure out what island you wanna go to and how long you wanna go on each island. Now for Athens, I would say we only stayed there two nights and that was one of our mistakes. I would spend three to four nights there to be able to kind of explore it and get a pretty good overview of the city. I wouldn't spend much more than that. Yeah, usually you're either, you're either coming flying into Athens and then starting your island hopping from there. We did a reversal where we started from the island of Crete and then we worked our way up to Athens. Right. Now, whenever you go to your island hopping, I would say on most islands, three to four nights is sufficient. We stayed uh, four nights in Santorini. That was more than enough. I feel like most people would even be able to do two or three. 
Um, three, I think, is a, a happy medium, though. Yeah. On Naxos, um, three or four nights would be sufficient as well. We stayed five, and that was great. It was a very relaxing trip. Now, Crete would be the only island that would be the exception to the rule. If you want to see a lot of the island. It's a large island. Huge, it's massive. It's basically five hours driving from one side to the other. And there, like, if you really want to see the whole island, you could... You know, get a rental car and then it would take some time so i would definitely want to be there at least a week a week to see the see the major attractions exactly. and everything in all the cities we were there a month and we didn't even get to see everything. i know i would have <laughs> i seriously i think that we could not see everything in two months yeah especially with kids because things were a little slower but yeah definitely more time for crete the largest island and then the smaller islands if you really want to hop and see them all and you have lots of time then i would say like three days each island you could soak it in on most of them no, yeah most of three or four ones. nights i think is more yeah. than enough okay our next topic is transportation getting around the islands <laughs> it's a pretty big one so in athens you have a lot of options that will probably be your first stop into the country so in athens you have uber you walk around it obviously it's a very <laughs> pedestrian friendly city but you have the buses you have the metro private um, transfers taxis. Yeah. You, you got lots of options we use uber mostly in athens and that was fine um so that's pretty easy now on the islands the story is a little different yeah there is no Uber on the islands, so taxis are quite expensive. And there's not many of them, so it is kind of yeah. hard to even find a taxi. So either, you know, there are some bus systems, but those are very limited. So in most cases, it is better to rent a car, or a lot of them had ATVs, so you could like rent the ATV, and that made it easier to park it, obviously. But us having kids, we didn't want to rent the ATV, so, you know, we were, we were either renting cars or we were getting a taxi or private transfers in the different islands. On Crete specifically, we rented a car. That's really the best way to explore it. That way you're not relying on the bus system because it's not great, honestly. It's good in between the three major cities, but it's not great the rest of the island. Yeah. Um, on Santorini, it's um, the car is probably your best option as far as most economical. We had a driver, which is not the cheapest option by yeah. far. It's it was very pretty, expensive. It was pretty expensive every time very we wanted expensive. to go somewhere. It's like, because we had trouble getting a taxi, we would get a private transfer, and that, that did add up really add up. quick. But if we had to do it again, I feel like we would need to brave it up and actually drive through Santorini, because it's the best way to see it. Mm -hmm. Now, Naxos, we rented a car there, but they're actually, their public transport there is decent. Um, so... It, yeah, it's a little bit, buses, one of the kind of bigger fine. islands, so yeah. they have a little bit better transportation system, but we still did rent a car there for a short time just so we could see some of the further away spaces, but you really don't need a car the whole time you're there. Okay, next up, island hopping. That one is a good one because- That's what Greece is all about, is exactly. island hopping. <laughs> Everybody wants to go island hopping. Um, island hopping was great, so we went to three different islands, and um, the one thing that I would say is make sure you check the ferry schedules before you book your accommodations. Ferries are fantastic, but they don't go to every island every day. So you want to make sure that you book your accommodations accordingly. Um, we use... What's that? Ferry Hopper. Ferry Hopper <laughs> was Ferry the Hopper. website that we used to be able to see the schedule. Now we use all of our ferries um, sea jets, which I think maybe the biggest company, I'm not sure, but yeah, it's definitely, they were definitely a popular nice. one. Yeah. The sea jets were great. They weren't rough at all. They made it easy, an easy process. I mean, sometimes the waiting for the ferry could be a little hectic, but easier than an airplane it's um so. <laughs> it's controlled chaos but once you get <laughs> through your chaos. first once you get through your first ferry you'll be you'll be yeah, fine you'll be a pro yeah it got easier <laughs> each time exactly did, yeah. but basically with the ferries it like he said we preferred it over airplanes it was quite easy they were very very comfortable our one ferry was a little late i think it was about an hour delayed so that's yeah. not bad still and, could have um, happened with a plane too, so. It could have. And <laughs> but you, no security. No security. You carry your own luggage, of course. You put your luggage inside under the at the bottom level, and then just go up and and then when it's time to leave, just grab your bag and go. Yeah. So you do have to be mindful though, because it will be stopping at Different several stops. Yeah. Several stops. So do, just don't get off at the first stop. Make sure that it's the correct one. Right. Because we almost were gonna get yeah, off at the wrong one before. What listen islands? carefully. We're like, which island are we at? Oh, wrong island. We gotta wait <laughs> till the next one. But the ferries itself, they were very comfortable. The seats were very comfortable. It was very clean. It was. Uh, they had a cafe usually, so yeah, you were able to nice. get snacks and drinks. It's quite a. a Pleasant Even experience. adult beverages, you could get those on the ferry too. Yeah, <laughs> I would say it was very, very, very nice. Yeah. 
Next topic is traveling with kids. So that's our specialty because we've been traveling now for over nine months, full-time homeschooling our kids. And yeah, they were with us on the whole island hopping experience. So we do have some tips for traveling with kids. Absolutely. One tip would be water, 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 ice cream. <laughs> water, 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 ice cream. Yeah. Lots of water, lots of ice Make cream. sure your kids stay hydrated, of course, and yeah. Especially if they're in the heat in the summertime. Yeah. Another thing is don't overpack your schedule. I know it's Greece, any beautiful destination, you wanna maximize your time and add as much to your itinerary as possible. But honestly, with or without kids, I think it's just a much better experience. If you just relax a little bit, don't cram your itinerary too packed with things to do each day. Try to allow some flexibility to give the kids and yourself a break. You yeah, know? Make, a pri make a priority list, definitely. That's what we did, and we didn't get to everything. So, you know, get those priorities done, the things that you really wanna see on each island, and then, you know, and then have the secondary list. And if you get everything done and you have extra time, then go to that secondary list. Exactly. But yeah, definitely make sure you get your priorities done and leave plenty of time, to just in case you don't get to see the, uh, everything, you know? Yeah, I think it's just, it, the, the Greek islands are really best experience savored. So don't try to rush, just try to relax and enjoy it as well. And your kids are gonna appreciate it. Now another thing with kids is make sure you pack lots of sunscreen or you can also buy it in Greece as well of course um, but sunscreen would be key especially in the summertime we actually like love our kids to wear like sun hats that are SPF resistant yeah. that way it and covers. the SPF shirts too shirts. so then because they really hate us putting sunscreen on their faces so you know I'm sure all you parents out there have dealt with this already in different areas but yeah in Greece for sure the sun is blazing so it's make hot. sure they get that wide brimmed hat we had the big floppy hat sun hats and then yeah obviously then you only have to if they have the shirt on SPF you just have to do just the arms and the legs and they're good to go so some activities that our kids really really enjoyed in Greece in Crete we did the most we were there the longest period of time so of course it makes sense that we did a lot of things there we went to two different Greek mythology theme parks to which I will leave the links um, down in the description so they, that was really really fun they were both on Crete and they were able to learn about Greek mythology and really oh yeah it was amazing fun, like go through a way. labyrinth maze to go find the Minotaur like so many different things that they've never done too like archery like yeah. it was such a great experience and things that we we weren't even expecting and we didn't know ahead of time but how family friendly that the island of Crete was so that was a big surprise and made it an even better experience for us than we thought we were gonna have there for the kids another place that we really really loved on Crete would be Elephant Nisi Beach now that beach you can go and watch our video because we have some some tips in there for you um, but that beach was lovely and our kids learned to snorkel there for the first time it was beautiful calm and it has water. the pink sand so the great thing about that is like a hundred meters out it was just you know very shallow so the kids it made it easy for them to do their first snorkeling experience so they really loved that and that was a great family friendly beach another beach that we loved on crete obviously you just the beaches are amazing in greece <laughs> But one beach specifically was Matala Beach. That beach stood out to me and the kids absolutely loved it. Yeah, so the great thing about that beach was they had caves built up into the cliffs, which actually were man-made back in the Roman times, but the hippies lived in them for a while, so that's why they call it Hippie Beach. And but the cool thing was like the kids, like I didn't let them climb all the way to the top, but they could climb up and go inside the caves and you had a beautiful view of the beach. Like, it was just an amazing experience. And yeah, the they loved town it. was so cute. There was so much like hippie art going throughout the entire town. The vibe was amazing. So we absolutely loved that. Yeah, definitely a highlight of our trip there. Yeah. Another thing would be if you go to Greece, take a cooking class. Our kids really, really loved that, didn't they? Oh yeah, they so definitely did. Yeah, we, we actually cooked with a local family and that was once again on the island of Crete. We have most of our activities on there since we were there the longest. But you can find but that activity in pretty anywhere. much anywhere. Anywhere, but yeah, that was a cool thing that we actually got to go with the local family. They showed us their farm. We got to break bread with them. Like Fabulous. such amazing experience. And that just once again reinforced that the Greek people are the most hospitable, some of the most hospitable, amazing people that we've seen in all of our travels in any country we've been to. I so agree. that was that was the great thing. Like the, the island hopping, everything's amazing, beaches, views, but the people, that's really what made it so wonderful there. I completely agree with that. Mm -hmm. Now moving on to Santorini, our favorite kids activity there um, and just family activity for anybody would be the catamaran cruise that we did. Oh yeah, that so was... it was a little, it was a little choppy on the waves, but 
it was a great experience overall. The kids loved it. Yeah, for it sure. It was so much fun, and we got to swim out to the volcano. It was just a really cool experience. Mm -hmm. Now on Naxos, there is no activity that really stood out, but the island is lovely. It has a really calm vibe. The beaches are just phenomenal. Oh yeah, like family friendly once again there. There was, you know, several different beaches. The beach that we were closest to, it was pretty shallow for a while and then it dipped down, but it, it still had plenty of like shallow water for the oh, kids yeah. to play in. Great place for them to do sand castles and it had like food and drinks right on the beach so it was easy. Had nice loungers and everything so the kids could take a break out of the sun. So that was an amazing beach experience. That was the best out of the three islands that we went to. Basically the best like chill beach experience for sure. So as a whole, I would say the Greek islands are very, very family friendly and you will find plenty for the kids to do and enjoy. Next up, accommodations. All right, you need to live somewhere. So. You gotta. <laughs> <laughs> so on accommodations, um, you will find basically anything for any budget that you can think of. Um, yeah, you we know. even know, what we, we talked to a lady actually that was staying in a $12 a night hostel. So she yeah. said it wasn't very nice, but hey. like that was in Santorini. And for for Santorini, which is known to be one of the most expensive Greek islands, like that's obviously, you're still amazing getting the, price. you can still walk out and see the same amazing sunset that the person that's spending thousands of dollars a night's getting, so. For sure, but we booked most of our accommodations through Airbnb and booking.com. Those are our two go-tos that we use in Greece. Airbnb, our stay in Crete was a fantastic deal because we booked a month long stay. We always save money on the long stays. Mm -hmm. In Crete, like I said before, we stayed in an Airbnb and that was in Rathimno. We love that area. Um, if you're going to Crete, I would say your two areas would be for accommodations would be Hanya. Hanya and Rethemno. Rethemno. Those two are great old towns. Um, you don't even have to leave them if you don't want to. There's quite a bit to do in each one. And they're just really, really nice and beautiful. In um, Santorini. Santorini, we stayed in Messaria. Messaria is absolutely lovely. It is in the middle of Santorini, so it is really, really easy to get around to anywhere within the island. Yeah, I mean the Ia, which everybody, when you think of Greece and you think of island hopping, that's the pictures you see is like Ia with the blue dome churches and everything, but they still have those in Masaria. Like you're not, blue getting, dome churches. you're not getting the big <laughs> cliff, cliff side, drop you know, off. drop off and everything, which that's maybe if you're a honeymooner or something, that's what you're going for. Then maybe you want to spend extra and, and live in a cliff. But for us, we don't want to be on the cliffs because we have kids that would fall off the cliffs if they were like <laughs> rough playing and stuff. So we were happy. We had a spa, hot tub, and we still got, you know, a view of the of the sunrise actually yeah. on the side we were on. For so a we got much better price. Much better price. Now on Naxos, we stayed in Agia Ana, which is a, such a lovely area that actually turned out to be our favorite beach. It is very calm and quiet, yet there's plenty to do. There's lots of restaurants amazing beach so i highly recommend that you're very close to naxos old town um, i think it's only maybe 15 minutes away if that so that was a fantastic location but no matter where you choose if you're going to be only staying in a place for three to four nights choose your accommodations wisely and pick accommodations near what you want to see whenever you're trying to prioritize your time yeah especially like if you're not wanting to rent a car and you know, getting to those places is a little more expensive on the islands. So you know, you are gonna want, like she said, you wanna be close to those or like find out if like it's on the bus line or it makes it easy to get to the attractions that you wanna see. Now in Athens, we chose the Plaka area. Again, we were short on time and that is very central. You know, it's basically near the Acropolis. It's, it has an amazing shopping area. It has lots of restaurants. So that was a great home base, I would say. I would stay in that area again. Yeah, um, we actually, yeah, we could walk. Cute. We could walk to the Acropolis and the museums and everything was right there. So Made we were convenient. happy with that area for sure. It's yeah. pretty easy. Language, so Obviously, Greek is a really hard language to learn. As we, <laughs> as we discovered. <laughs> as we discovered, we always, everywhere we go, we, 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 we want to try to learn as much of the language as we can, but we've been through 10 countries last year. So obviously, we're not going to pick up, you know, be every fluent language. in every language. Unfortunately so yeah, not. so you do want to learn the basics, like Yasis. 
hello. You know, that would be hello. Eferisto. Thank you. Am I saying it right? Okay. Eferisto. It's been a while. We've been out of the out of Greece for a little bit. Uh, but yeah, learn the basics just out of respect, you know, and to it, it make the locals feel more comfortable. But they are fine with you speaking English. Most everyone we ran into spoke yeah, English. Spoke English, except for the very elderly. You know, but you know they they learn English and they're in high school now, so they're all learning English. Oh yeah, everybody pretty much that we encountered that's in the service type of industry, um, or anybody that was really like less than fifty years old, like, <laughs> yeah. everybody spoke English. There was really no language barrier that we discovered in Greece, which was quite nice. It was, yeah, it made I actually it a lot thought easier. there would be actually, more yeah, expected... of a language barrier. Yeah, even some of the smaller towns we went to when we would stop at some of the yeah. smaller places and restaurants, we were like, oh no, I mean, there would be some menus that were only in Greek in some of the smaller places. Need something translated, we use Google Lens to mm -hmm. take a picture of whether it's in the grocery store, you want to translate a label or a menu. It's so easy and it basically gets rid of any language barrier. Now, currency. So in Greece, they use the Euro, of course. Um, you don't really have to use money, paper money very much. You no. can use your credit card in most places we discovered. We only ran into a few little places, or of course, if you want to buy something from like some of the small vendors, they'll they'll want cash only because it is a pretty right, big charge for course. them to use that credit card. Yeah. So, or if you want to bargain with anybody, like some of the small yes. crafts and every, people and everything, they they want you. If you want to bargain, you need to bargain with euros, of course. Of course. So I would recommend um, using Charles Schwab, which is what we use if you're in the U.S. An amazing. ATM card that you're able to take money out of the ATM and they refund you any uh, transaction fees. We've tested it like every country that we went to, yeah. they have not charged us any ATM fees. Yeah, so they refund everything. It's yeah. all been refunded. I was thinking like maybe it works in some countries, maybe not. No, it's but, great. Yeah. If you hear some screaming in the background, the kids are playing video games. Huh, they're so that's, a video game party. that's how we got to sneak away here to make this video, is they're back there playing video games. So you might hear them getting a little excited Rowdy. back there. <laughs> But yeah, so have some cash on you. Use use cash for smaller transactions. In most restaurants, you will be able to use your credit card. Now, as far as shopping, leave some room in your luggage for shopping. That yeah. is for sure. In Greece, we found so many incredible um, little boutiques or just like incredible souvenirs that you can buy that you can't find in other places. Uh, you might want to stock up on olive oil or different things that they have there like herbs oregano oh yeah um, we definitely regretted like not being our, able to our, purchase. our suitcases yeah filled to the brim and we see so many things along our travels and we're like well you know we don't have any space yeah you know? so maybe like buy an extra suitcase or something yeah, no. for all your souvenirs that you're gonna want to bring yeah there's amazing you. there's a lot of amazing things amazing a lot of amazing shopping amazing like i know you saw some jewelry a lot of jewelry lot and of stuff jewelry. that you wanted so that was one thing we could get because it was small but Anything else bigger, we couldn't fit our luggage, so that that was yeah. kind of bad. So thing. don't overpack and buy some goodies there. Local Greek cuisine, so. The star <laughs> of the show, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody looks forward to the Greek food in Greece. And it did not disappoint. Oh, like, loved up to every you. island that we went to was amazing. Everything in Athens was amazing. And yeah, I've always been a fan of Greek food, and I was wondering how it would differ from the United States. Better. But better, yeah. <laughs> I mean, obviously, so a, lot of, a lot of Greeks have moved to the United States, and I've had really good Greek food, but there's just something special so about, like, the the tzatziki is so much better, the feta is so much better. The Greek salad, just, like, all of the ingredients yeah. are so much better. Some of our favorite dishes was the, for me, it was the pasticcio. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it it's right. It's kind of like a Greek lasagna. Yeah, yeah <laughs> it's a Greek a pasta dish that is absolutely phenomenal. It is so delicious. And yeah. I like the moussaka, and I liked, of course, the gyro. So, you know, I probably had maybe 20 some euros like across <laughs> different islands and I find favorites everywhere. And sometimes even we had already eaten, I'd sneak out at night and get an extra one while everybody's sleeping. <laughs> the, food, the food is just fantastic. So I definitely recommend either doing a food tour while you're there or making your own. We did that yeah. in Crete before. You can watch our video uh, for that. But it's really fun to try all the different foods that they have. And each island may have their own specialties as well. 
Crete quite had quite a bit of different yeah. things. And that... they love their snails in the shell, which our kids actually tried. <laughs> we did try. So yeah, we all tried the snails and they weren't that bad actually. Like we no. had escargot before, but the Cretan snails are different and you eat them or like you have to pull them out of your shell. So that was a cool experience. Yeah, it was pretty cool. So yeah, I definitely try all the Greek food. Budget. So I am the, the spender. <laughs> I'm the spender, and she is the budgeteer. I'm the here. budget police. <laughs> budget police. <laughs> budget I am. Deal. Yeah. So um, she keeps track of everything in the budget. So I am not going to say that I'm good with the budget. So I'm going to let He's her not. talk mostly <laughs> on the budget stuff over here. <laughs> so I, I would say in Greece, you can really it can be a really budget friendly destination or it can be an extremely luxurious destination. So there's really something for everybody. Um, you can get great your own accommodations. Yeah, like we were talking about earlier, them. you can Hostels. go from like a $12 hostel to like, I saw some places that were $3,000 a night in Santorini, like crazy things, you know? Uh, so yeah, there's something for everybody though. That's the thing, it's not something just for the elite. There's something for everyone, which is great. That's how every destination should be. Exactly. So we found the accommodations quite reasonable. Even in Santorini, we were able to find decent accommodations for a decent price. Yeah. Um, it was definitely not low budget by any means, but it was good <laughs> price and considering for yeah, what we got. Yeah, but the Crete, Crete was definitely the most great. budget friendly. And because it's a bigger island, there's more accommodations available. Transportation can be expensive on the island if you are not renting a car or even if you're renting a car it can be quite pricey to rent a car in high season so those are things that you also kind of need to to look into and see um, if you want to rent a car how much it's going to cost you especially in peak season now what we did was we rented a car for part of the time and we did all of our sightseeing in a good chunk of time and then we didn't have a car for the rest of the time which worked out for us that way we weren't paying for a, a car for the whole month yeah that definitely helped um, on the budget because yeah so what we did is we saw the things we wanted to that were just short trips or on foot yep got that out of the way and then we're like okay now got now the now's trips. the time we, now we got the car and now we're going to go and see the things that we exactly. wanted to see that were further away now um activities activities can range quite a bit so you can find really inexpensive and free things to do uh, in greece there's plenty to do that is not expensive children in most places were free which is amazing yeah like museums and different stuff like there would be a small charge for us yeah. And then a lot of things kids. for kids were free. So very kid friendly in that respect. Yeah. yeah, very budget friendly in that respect too. But the one thing would be some tours can get quite pricey. We didn't do that many tours in reality and mostly because they can add up. Um, like I would say the one activity that we did that was quite expensive but worth it was the catamaran cruise you know that was yeah santorini is an expensive island so you if you're budget friendly that might be an island that you want to skip there is activities for every budget from free ones to very expensive ones yeah and i think that makes greece a great destination for budget friendly people now another thing would be food food we found out is very very affordable of course they're going to have expensive restaurants in certain areas or if you want like fine dining but we're pretty casual eaters, I would say. And we found the food delicious and inexpensive. Yeah, so actually like the- all of our boxes. Actually like some of the most expensive things we had was like pizza. Whenever the kids wanted pizza, that would yeah. be a little more expensive. But the Greek food, which was much better actually- And in, big portions. And big portions so like, was actually a good yeah, deal. Yeah, it was a great deal. Like you can get a big Greek salad and share it really. Like, you know, so- Yeah, I know, and my euros that I ate 20 some of, those were like three euro 80, three, three euro 20, some of them in different areas. And then Santorini, some of them were a little more expensive, like up to five euros, but still like you're getting like a whole meal in, in the pita bread. Like that was great deal, I thought for that yeah. price. So definitely budget friendly as far as the food. Now, the one thing that will get expensive is if you are hopping around, ferries are expensive, oh, I yeah. thought, especially for a family. They added up really, really quick. It's kind of expensive. It was kind of expensive for the ferry. Yeah, so once again, if you're on a budget, just hop to less islands, you know? <laughs> Do that. So as promised in the beginning of the video, we're gonna tell you which was our favorite island. That is such a tough question. And I actually, we haven't discussed this, and she told me earlier, she told me earlier when we were talking that she might have a different thought than me. So now I'm kind of, one well, I here. feel like I think I know what your favorite is going to be. <laughs> okay. So, okay. For me, 
Oh, it's so hard. I feel like the most charming I lent was probably Naxos. Naxos was quite cute. I love the old town. It was very kid friendly. The whole island felt very calm and safe. The kids loved it as well. I don't know. I don't know. Oh. And then, yeah, I kind of go back and forth too because Santorini is always the dream, you know? That's, you see the Instagram models with the flowing dress and the blue dome churches and the beautiful sunset. And it but, is beautiful. It yeah. really is stunning. But it's weird, like, as, as a dad, as a parent, I just saw my kids, like, having so much more joy in Crete because Crete. there's so much more things to do. Also, I think because of just the the time that we had, like, we were there a long time. Like, I wouldn't have wanted to really spend, like, a month on Santorini. For no. one, For one, it was more expensive. <laughs> and two, not. it's like, I feel like you see everything. A few days. Like, in a few days. It's yeah, a very, where, very small island. Where Crete just made me want to stay longer. It's like, oh, wow. And when, when we left, there was many things that we hadn't seen yet that we did want to see. So we'll definitely be returning to Crete. And then next time, we'll obviously choose different islands to hop to. Because there's a lot of other smaller islands that we want to see in the Greek islands. And yeah, definitely in the comments, let us know like if you have seen other islands that we haven't been to. Where what's we should favorite? Where we should go next. Yeah. yeah. So what's the favorite? We haven't really said. So I guess I'm going to say Crete. But I'm saying that from a father's standpoint. If I was like going with you for a romantic like few nights... I would, I would, I would get that cliff, cliff side with a pool, <laughs> with that view and a bottle of champagne. Like that would be the thing. So maybe someday, once the we're not traveling with the kids, <laughs> we'll go back and we'll do a different version of Santorini. But and then we also like you, you know Naxos the, was the really relaxed too. atmosphere of Naxos, which that's a place you could stay longer and chill. Like it's maybe not as exciting, exciting, exciting as the other destinations. But I feel like definitely like for two weeks, I could chill there on the I beach. Chill. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I, I feel like in the Greek islands, there's probably something for everybody, you know? So try different mm -hmm. islands and, and see I don't what think you we like. Really, we, I don't think we really talked about Santorini doesn't really have nice beaches. No. So that's the thing. There's a lot of rocky beaches. There's actually a beach where the cliff may fall on you while you're at the beach that we saw. So if you're like the beach person, don't choose Santorini. Choose like Naxos or Crete. Out of the ones we've been to, of course, there's many other islands to choose from. Uh, but yeah, I would say, I guess I'm gonna go for short term Santorini and long term Crete, and then long term for sure Crete, yes. Yeah, and then what I would be your short term, that. shorter term between the other ones? Uh, Naxos. Naxos. Yeah. Okay. Santorini is just busy for me, so. All right. Yeah, and and if you have been, a lot of people are watching this because they're preparing to go to the Greek islands. But if you have been to the Greek islands. Comment what's your favorite or where we should go next. Well, that is all for today. I hope that you guys found this video helpful. Yeah, we are actually filming this video from Southeast Asia. We are currently in Malaysia. So we're gonna have a big series on Asia coming up soon too. Lots so more stay tuned to for that. But yeah, we wanted to kind of cap off everything that we did in Greece and try to give as many tips as we could. So like she said, hope that you got something useful out of that. If you did, please like, subscribe, and look for our future videos. You can also look back, we're gonna put it right there. You can look back at our series of videos about our experiences. We made several videos of those three islands in Athens. So you can go check those out. Alrighty, we'll see you guys in the next one. All right, see ya.